So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, everybody. This is Cindy with Energized Living Today, and Masami's here today. Hi, Masami. Let's give her a big woohoo! Hey, woo-hoo. Hey, celebration here. time. Come on. <laughs> I've got a party going on right here. Sure a celebration is. to last throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Woo! Or at least four years. Anyways. <laughs> It's so good that everybody is here today. Thank you for joining us. And um, I just want to just take a quick look, see who's all here. So great to see everybody. A um, couple of things that I want to start with. First of all, you know, all of this political stuff, I'm over it. I just want everybody to know I'm, I'm really over it at this point. I'm just ready to move on with my life. And yet I'm being told that we have to talk about these things. So that's why we're talking about it again. And I was told that we have a very important choice that we need to make. And for those of you who didn't read the email, I'm just going to go ahead and read what I wrote today because I can say it you know, what I wrote much more eloquently than just off the top of my head. There's a great deal of noise going on all around us, all around the U.S. Um, Personally, like I said, I'd like to move on. However, there is something we must talk about in order to heal. And this is to heal as a world. As you've seen in the last few days, the world has spoke out about what is going on or what has been going on in the U.S., Emotionally, so many of us feel torn. I was surprised at how many people expressed the same thing. I heard over and over and over again, I feel like I can breathe again. You know, and this is something that I didn't even know was going on in my body until this whole thing was over. I didn't know how much tension I was holding in my body. You know, it'd be so easy to get caught up in saying to other people, ha, 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 um, get over it, which I was told many, many times, and I know that a lot of you have expressed that as well. And that would be, you know, that would feel like justification. Um, But, you know, because that's what they said to us. But personally, I would like to say to people, sorry for your loss, only you know, that would, be a, that would be a complete lie because I'm not sorry because this is not a loss. It doesn't feel like a loss. It feels like a moving on. So it's very different than what I would call a loss. This is a moving on. So how do we acknowledge our feelings while showing empathy to others? And I think this is really crucial because people are hurting. You know, almost half of the United States voted for the president and the other half, half, well, more than half, uh, voted for Joe Biden. And so we want to comfort people. They're hurting too. And yet we have this mix of emotions that we have to get through. So that's why Masami is here today, to help us get through these emotions, feel what we feel, process it. And that way we can engage the heart above the noise because right now the head is in the way the head is saying oh but nye, nye, nye. you know even the other day I'll, I'll just admit it I was out for a motorcycle ride with my husband and when we were driving down the road and I saw a Trump sign I found myself going <laughs> it was just like a visceral response I couldn't help it and it was like Cindy stop it. (laughs) But it's just that visceral release, you know, so there's, you're like tap dancing with your emotions. And Masami, are you feeling that way? You know, um, yes and no. You know, I think, um, Mm, I, I feel like I've been doing a lot of work as all of us are, you know, I know you've been doing a lot of work, Cindy. Um, definitely I went through the feeling of high, you know, of just feeling like, is this for real kind of a thing? Um, and it, I found myself spontaneously just starting to cry, you know, and, uh, lots of range of emotions, you know, and I think it's, it's fully 
good to feel these things as human bodies and human being because we are having this human experience right now. So, and then I don't suppress it or anything like that. And at the same time, um, I've been working this year a lot on this theme of the liminal space. It's this space of unknown for so long that I was, I felt prepared for, um, I mean, I have no doubt that Biden will win, really. It's just that it's not over. And I think that's where we're stuck at right now, you know, um, because he's not officially, we haven't heard that, that it's, completely official yet right from the government level as far as i know from today's news so the the lawsuits and everything's carrying on and everything so that's for real too but i think what we can all do is to enjoy those feelings of elatedness or you know um the full breathing breathing was a big one for me i texted you Cindy, and i said you know i i had so many physical pain for the last couple of weeks particularly and boom, just all went away in just, just that moment. You know, that moment when Pennsylvania was called, I, my neck pain just went away and it was just a huge relief. And I felt like I can finally sit up and I can breathe and take a breath, you know? So there's been a theme around that for sure. And at the same time, I'm trying to hold two truths and the, you've already shared, one is that the half of the United States voted for President Trump and the more than half voted for Biden. So there's that two truths that exist as well as yes, Biden most likely will be our 46th president, but at the same time, we don't know yet. You know, we don't know, meaning we haven't quite gotten to that point exactly yet, 100%. So you want to really carry your body through holding these unknown spaces. And we're all just kind of having to juggle different pieces. But within that, it's important to come back to being grounded. And at the same time, don't suppress if it means joy to you. It means like, you know, you just want to express it. Berries. It's okay, right? It's okay. <laughs> raspberries are okay, as well as tears are okay. Um, you know, um, I, I'm, I've noticed I'm sleeping, like I'm needing a lot more sleep right now for the last couple of days. Um, so there'll be a lot less. Of, <laughs> yeah, the shifts will be happening and, you know, bio individually. And I think it's okay to sit in whatever this is that is not quite sure. And this, this week is a very um, kind of adjustments week too. So because we have Mars retrograde that goes direct on Friday. Friday and then we have new moon, <laughs> yeah, new moon on Saturday. There's so much going on, okay? So not just Mercury retrograde that's going into shadow time and Mars going direct and the full moon, uh, not full moon, but the new moon. There's a lot going on. And so prepare yourself, meaning I said to my group yesterday that prepare yourself in terms of getting good nutrients, good hydration, make sure that the, you are taking care of who you are and show up to the moment by moment, knowing that you're flooding the world with light and that you are light and you are made out of love and light. And that's the truth. That's the ultimate truth between multiple truths that exist. So always show up from that ultimate truth that the, we are all light, you know, and the love. So I, I'll pause there. But yeah, it, it's okay to feel the extension of who, who we are as human beings and have a huge range of emotions with it. And it's okay. Yeah. Well, I wanted to go out and express myself, just get out, ride, feel that sense of freedom. And when I gave the signs, the raspberry, I wasn't giving it to any person. I wasn't reacting to any person. And I could because of some of the family things were really just bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. And I refused to read them. Ferris and I uh, talked about that this morning. In fact, um, I don't like to engage in all the negativity and Ferris and I had a conversation about that because Ferris dives into it and he wants to read all of the news. He wants to read all of the bad comments. He wants to read all the negativity. I can't allow myself to go there. 
Do I express? Yes, I, I did. I expressed by getting out, going for walks, running, giving the raspberries, however it is. I express it and get it out of my body, but I can't go there. And what I feel from Ferris, and, and I told him I was going to share this today. I'm going to tell on you, Ferris. Um, n- constant negativity. He's always angry. He goes into depression. And I see him, you know, really um, taking a nosedive emotionally and we can't let ourselves go there express yes but if you hold on so tightly to this all this stuff that's going on there you can hurt yourself that does not mean you shouldn't be in the no but you know just hold on loosely express yourself and then just let it go know enough be careful about diving in too deep or you'll drive yourself crazy. One of the things, Masami, that I was told when I first started channeling at the beginning of the year is to not look at anybody else's stuff, not to look at any other channels, not to look at anybody, you know, psychics, anybody except for the people I was guided to. And I was guided to a couple, but very few. And now I fully understand why? Because I have people emailing me and say, but this psychic said this, and this psychic said this. What I have came to me purely. And I was told that, that Joe Biden would win. And my question was, you know, back was, will he get to take office though? He definitely won. There's no doubt in my mind. Will he get to take office? And the question that was that was answered for me in this way was it sunday i think it was which is why do you think we showed you all these things to show you where you have the power we have the power if we focus on the right thing when i first started channeling um what i channeled was the storms and we talked at length about the storms and then what was it that the that it was the destruction of and how can we heal by the very very things that it could destroy if we let it but if we take our attention and we focus on order compassion acceptance unity truth wisdom and trust we can rebuild that trust so the elements are there And it's up to us to put them in place, to use the prisms. When I woke up this morning, I started channeling the the prism prism of the first light being, which um, which is trust. And all of a sudden, all seven engaged. And I felt myself aiming it right towards Georgia. It wasn't anything intentional but all seven now of these uh, of this light is amplifying the light that's going towards georgia everything's in place we step back and we let it happen and we don't hold on to it so tight the outcome so tight that it destroys us that's my feeling mm. so uh, ferris do you want to say anything before masami You're right about the anger. Uh, The depression, and for a couple of days, y'all, I've I've been in one of my depressions. Uh, I don't think that's purely caused by by politics. That's just one of those things that I get. Uh, But I was thinking after our talk about why the anger? And a lot of it is is just frustration because there are people who are knowingly 
sowing discord to other people that are being taken in by it. And I feel helpless. Because I want to be able to to help those people understand what's going on. Uh, and, and God knows uh, uh, I can be taken in just like anybody else can. Uh, and occasionally have been. Uh, I will share just just one instance uh, th th that uh, one of these new groups, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, social media platforms uh, I checked out yesterday. And the first thing I found was a discussion of religion and politics. And it was so vile that I, I had to just get out of it. To hear a Christian say, if Jesus were to come back today, he would destroy these, these evil Democrats. Just... Yeah, and that means I, I, I don't, they're I don't up for to, destroying I me. I don't know how to take it. Yeah, that's that's why I have to back away. Uh, and and maybe I do just have to stay away from it altogether. But we are in danger. We are in danger because it, look at look at the vote. Even though it's not as close as as as, as the last vote was election was, uh, it was still awfully close. And it's and it's disinformation. Yeah, it's playing on people's fears, and even some of our own community that wrote and said, "Oh, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen." Yeah. What bothers me, and Masami, I would like you to sp speak to this as well. They're taking things that are right in front of them, evidence that are in front of them that the president has done and said, and then they're taking Joe Biden and putting what the president actually has shown he would do and putting it on him where there's no evidence. And my mind cannot get around that. It's just like there's, there's zero evidence that that's, you know, on one case than the other. And that's, that's where my mind just goes. Phew. So Masami, how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Again, this is about getting real about <laughs> what's going on out there. Yeah. And I'm, I thank you both of you for sharing from the bottom of your hearts. Um, Cause at Ferris, I was going to actually challenge you not to go into your shield, which is usually a sarcasm. Okay, and I'm really glad you didn't hold that shield up and say to deflect me, deflect Cindy's question or, you know, I was going to actually ask you the same thing, go deeper into your anger. Where's that coming from? Um, and so, so thank you for sharing that. I think it means a lot to all of us because we can all relate to that feeling. And that's the beautiful thing about feelings, right? Is that it doesn't separate humans from colors or shapes or uh, our ethnicities or, you know, our backgrounds or Democrats or Republicans, we can all relate to the feeling tones. Um, we can, you know, all of us can do that. That's where the compassion comes in. That's, that's the true empaths job, right? As an intuitive and empaths and channelers, mediums, we, we need to tap into the feeling tones of human, humanness, this is raw humanness that we're all experiencing, whether you vote it for him or not. It's, it doesn't matter. We're all experiencing a range of emotions. And I actually did a funny thing, and it may sound like crazy thing, but I went back to 2016 
and looked up photos of the reactions of um, the supporters of the Democrats, so Clinton's supporters. And I actually did a screenshots of several photos of people distraught, okay? And then I went to this year, and after um, we heard about Pennsylvania and then after about Biden, you know, most likely in every network was saying it's Biden. And uh, um, I actually Googled it the next day, if there are some photos of reactions of people that voted for Trump. And I screenshotted them and cropped it just so that if I were to show you guys the photos of these people, you would not even be able to distinguish the differences in who voted for what, okay? So what we're experiencing, what we're witnessing is an amazing opportunity to really see and tap into four years ago, you were experiencing that. And now you may be elated, okay? You might be so angry, but all these emotions are human nature. So that's number one. And to not to shy away from it and to, this is the time to lean into that difficulties, whatever that may be, lean into joy, whatever that may be, you know, and to be fully be you. Okay. That's one. Um, and the other one, I wanted to read a, a quote from Muhammad Gandhi. So it says, we, but mirror the world, we, but mirror the world, all the tendencies present uh, present, sorry, all the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. All the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. I'm going to pause there. And Ferris, I really want you to dig deeper because you might be externally angry, but that anger, you will be, be able to find it within your own body also, that you might have been acting that way towards you also, maybe towards your own health, maybe towards your own well-being, okay? And I'll continue. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This is the divine mystery supreme. A wonderful thing it is and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. So we shall not sit here and wait till the half of the United States come to their senses, all right? Because that day will never come. Yeah. And you shouldn't waste your life doing that because you have a limited amount of prana, which is a life force that was given to you when you came into this world and was a gift from your ancestors. So you want to use that carefully and with respect, the utmost respect when you are using your prana, your life force. So you want to choose, you want to manage your day-to-day -day reactions. You want to manage your day-to-day -day choices in particularly in this liminal space, not knowing space where one party or one you know, sector of the world is screaming anger and fury and the other may be elated and joyful. But in that, we don't know exactly what this holds for us because this is a very complicated time in its history. that None of us has been here before. And whoever wins, meaning, you know, yeah, Biden hopefully will continue on. But whatever unfolds in the next month or so to two months, maybe even longer, we don't know exactly. What you want to know is that in this liminal space, you have the power to manage your day to day. And it's important that you make the choice to feed you with nourishment. So every action has to become from the place of the center of love. Like I said, it's a center of love and light. And so what that means is you have to make the decision to say, I no longer choose to read these things or look at these things because you get to choose what you feed inside you. I'm not there force feeding you, Ferris. So you get to turn that off on your own. And you, you, know, you ask yourself, how would, would I show up if I knew that I'm love? Okay, how would I show up to my life if I knew I am love? If I knew I'm a complete enoughness within myself 
then how would I show up to these news? Because I show up to it and it doesn't impact me as much as it used to, because I've been working on this for so long about the sense of enoughness within me, that the, I'm a confident, I'm a loving and lovable human being. I mean, there are times that I kind of fall off and go, maybe nobody wants to hear from me. You know, I should just turn off my um, videos and I stop going out into the world, right? I mean, I have my old patterns and Mars retrograde really does that to you. Mars retrograde will continue, the shadow period will continue till early January. And what Mars retrograde does is that it digs up your old patterns, old ego and old narratives and old reactions, old ways of old stories, okay? It's how you react to different things that you don't agree with or impacts you. So it's challenging you, particularly this week, it's gonna be continued to be challenging because the old patterns are gonna challenge you because they don't wanna die. This ego wants to live. So as long as you feed it, it will continue. So you just go, all right, ego, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, old narratives, You're my old patterns. I hear you, I see you, but I have a choice because I, I'm flooding the universe with light. This is my choice. So please quietly go away. You know, so that's, and then the third thing I just wanted to mention quickly is that I heard this from many, many Europeans in the past. They say, you know, you Americans, don't know how to take vacations. So a lot of Americans complain about the fact that the companies don't give enough vacations. And they're like, oh, look at those people in Finland, you know, or Norway, they get like three months out of the year off or blah, blah, blah. We complain plenty about other people getting enough vacations. But a lot of Europeans have said to me, you guys don't know how to rest. You don't know how to just have a joyful moment. You're always looking behind you going, is this joyful moment going to you know, stay, stay with me or is something bad coming behind me? So we've got to learn to have more faith, okay? Deeper faith and know that you got to practice, Ferris, how to have a vacation, okay? Have a vacation. Take a break from this mess. Take a break from this craziness and learn to, to take three months off, okay? Learn to shut it off because it's an addiction because we as Americans are addicted. We're a very addicted community. We're addicted to working so hard. We're addicted to self-sabotage. We're addicted to creating emotions that would just stir us up. But we're not addicted enough to rest and joyfulness and vacation and stillness and calmness and silence, in which, Cindy, you've been talking about a lot. We're, we suck at it as a nation to silence who we are. Yeah. I think we also suck at just having a good old fun vacation. So that's what I got for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love what you just said, Masami, because... Love you, Ferris. Whole... Yeah, I love you too. And what a beautiful question. What if I show up as if I'm loved? Yeah. What would you do differently? How, yeah. how, how would you interact with this world? And know you. you are loved because you're loved by me, Ferris. Thank you. <laughs> and I know you're loved by a lot of other people. <laughs> I couldn't be quiet. <laughs> and, and this is what we meant about heart above the noise. That's what you just expressed in such a beautiful way. Masami, heart above the noise. Stop coming from here and coming from here. You know, even when I was out riding and I gave the raspberry to the signs, that didn't come from my head. That was visceral. It was a, just a release. And that's good. That's good. That wasn't hateful. It was good. It was childlike. It was my yancha. <laughs> Right, right. We have to release because we've been in, um, inside pressure cooker, you yeah. know, and um, I don't know any of you had like old fashioned pressure cooker. Oh my God. My mom who used to make pressure cooker soup or something. She'll be like, get out of the kitchen. You know? <laughs> like, like some bomb was going to get go off. Yeah. Like, like what's going on? I'm like, we're going to release the pressure cooker. 
because it was it was just going to spew this crazy steam. Remember those? Yep. I mean, got one in my kitchen now. Yeah, <laughs> technology has improved, but before she would be like, "You burn yourself, get out!" You know, she's like shield, and so that's what that's what we have to do right now. We got to release the valve. Do it. Do it and do it fully and know where that's coming from. It's a necessity for so many of us. And once you release and make that, you know, high pitch beep noise out of the way, then come back, come back and say, how can I take a little bit of break from all this so that I can come back knowing that I am the expression of love and that we're dealing with human beings. We're not dealing with people that voted for Trump and people that voted for Biden. Okay, no, we're dealing with people. We're dealing with human beings all breathe the air together. We're literally breathing together. You'll be able to do that if you can just release the pressure, take a vacation from it, whatever that may be for you, then you can show up with the compassion because they could use a lot of compassion. We could use a lot of compassion. All of us could use a big group hug. Entire world can. This has been a rough, rough time, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. And, you know, I do, I do want to or pressure somebody into changing their mind. They're going to dig in that much more. So you're not going to do any good. Just, it's hard to just back up and say, you know, that's, it's not my place to change their mind. It's only my place to come from the heart. I think it's heart above the noise. I think it's important to point out uh, some of the some of the best people I know are Trump supporters. Uh, and I would not try to, to to convince them otherwise because I know where they're coming from. They're not they're not coming from a place of disinformation and misinformation, like so many uh, people are. They're not the folks that I'm concerned with. And, and I, just, I just feel like it's important to, to, to mention that. Uh, just because they disagree with me politically doesn't make them stupid. No. Yeah, no. truly my, my concern is over the disinformation especially when there's facts right in front yeah. of folks and people spew this at me and I'm going, you know, and my first reaction is to say, but you don't understand. I have this video and this video and this video and this video to prove to you it's actually over here and not no evidence over here. And so my evidence-based person, my, my science, my one that likes this, even you know, d d <laughs> I look at it and say, oh my gosh, I'm a channel. And yet I like solid evidence, you know, and what was I told when I was given this information saying I was going to be, you know, channeling all this information, I was told I would have hard evidence and I got it all along the way because I need that. I need that. But other people, they don't care if there's evidence. They don't care about the truth because there's something else that this disinformation fulfills for them. And that's when we are, when we look at that, our heart above the noise, our heart is saying, what is missing for somebody where they have this need to believe something so blatantly, you know, out there wrong, no evidence. What? Let's look at the need. What is it there? And let, what can we supply for them? What can we help to heal? You know, what is it that they are not facing in their own lives? They're using this as something to grab onto so they don't have to look at something within themselves. That's what it feels like to me. Does that feel right to you, Masami? Yeah. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, it does. You know, I think there's been a lot of human psyche that's playing out. Um, I think this is, this is an interesting concept that, that we have to always remember about this United States of America. We're a very young con country, mm -hmm. kind of like a teenagers, right? So I think 
it helps to kind of think that way. This is why mm -hmm. it's mind boggling for some European countries like, you know, like German chancellor, um, she would just be like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> why Americans are like voting this way. Like I heard um, on NPR one morning, I think it was, it was somebody from Europe. I can't remember, maybe it was a French guy, but somebody saying, you know, if they did not vote Trump out this time, we don't really understand the, um, I guess we didn't understand Americans. That kind of a comment was said. And I thought, you know, does anybody understand teenagers here? Like, <laughs> seriously, do we understand teenagers? Like one day they're really into French fries and the next day they're like absolutely hating the French fries. You know, they're into Cheetos instead. Like, I don't know. I mean, you know, hormones are raging. We don't know where we're going. One day you're best friends and then the next day you hate each other. Like, okay, I'm, I'm not trying to like stir up your trauma from high school, but I've, I've witnessed horrible things in high school and but especially women, right? And boys are like, you know, guys are just like, oh, whatever, you know, and they're dealing with their own hormones too. I mean, it's just, it's crazy time. So when you look at the United States from that point of view or that eyes, you can kind of have a little bit of a compassion towards it, you know? And I think teenagers tend to do this. They tend to go into black and white, black and white. It's good mm -hmm. or evil, good or evil. You know, this is what I like and this is what I don't like. You know, if you ask the teenagers, they will say, oh, no, I don't like that. Mm -mm, no. You know, um, but I think more we can kind of tap into people who like to hang out around the gray area, you know, so that's maybe me grew up in Japan really helps to understand this a little bit is this, there's a gray area where the white and the black colors marble together and create this like beautiful different shades of gray that's kind of where you you want to be so you don't want to be this extreme one or the other but you have the abilities to sense different shades of gray um you know it's the it's the middle way it really is the middle way and the middle way is not it's not the same as moderation everyone okay people say oh that means just moderation right and i say to them yeah do you would you do cocaine in moderation like, yeah, you would never do cocaine in moderation, okay? So, it, no, it's not moderation, okay? It's, it's the middle way. And if we could straddle a little bit more often between the, 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 these two extremes and come, come with, in with the zebra idea that you brought up, you know, Cindy, and you, you text me, texted me this beautiful feather that had a black and white. It's marbling of that, you know, and then you, you yourself need to become, all of us need to become the zebra right now to be able to hold both. You know it's funny. Hmm. I just wrote that down before you said it out loud. Perfect. Yeah. It's the zebra it's, way because it yeah. is the middle way. And here we go again, for those of you who didn't see these feathers that showed up for me. And what's funny is you just described the, the motorcycle colors I'm doing, which is gray and white, a soft gray and white zebra stripes on the side of my motorcycle um, tank and just the softness. And that to me is the middle way. It's not such a stark this and a stark that. It's subtle, it's soft. Yeah, it's so we're, we're all growing up as a nation, I think. You know, yeah. we're all growing up. We're all starting to think like, oh, it's a, my senior year now, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to graduate. And where am I going to go? Like, I can't just say I'm a teenager. You know, you can't do that anymore. Like, you may have to think about the next steps to adulthood, you know. But I think we need to also look at our countries from that point of view. So that gives you a little bit more compassion towards what we're all going through. And in Ferris, you're right. You look at people that voted for Trump or, you know, whatever. I mean, whatever it may be. We can't just say because you voted for the one party, therefore all of you is bad. You know, it's no that's a very teenage thing to say, right? It's like, oh, well, you went to so and so's party, so you're no good now. You know, like that's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> through the teenage language and you start laughing and you go oh my god can I at least get to the sophomore year in college by now like grow up right 
We need to all grow up, but grow growing up means is to grow out of our patterns and find the middle way and to, to play with the gray area. And maybe for you, it's difficult to really, you know, look at the photos of these devastated um, Trump supporter voters that are just devastated. They're literally on the ground praying for a different outcome. You know, I don't know you've seen those videos, but I look at that and I feel for them. I do. And I'm not feeling for them because I feel sorry for them. No, it's just, wow, I've been there before. I was on the ground on the night that Trump got elected four years ago. I was in the ba- on the bathroom floor at midnight, just sobbing, you know, and I was pounding the, the floor with my hands with so much like fear and anger and, you know, just, I've never felt anything like that. I felt like I was being tormented in that moment, but that feeling it, are some of these people are experiencing right now. So come back, come back to the middle way, come back to let's grow out of being just a teenager as a nation. Again, I just want to reiterate the phrase heart above the noise. When I say that, I feel the softness the like you express the middle way. Um, one thing heart I want to middle way, right? Heart is your middle way. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So heart above the noise is the middle way. I love that. Um, It's funny that you said that about the teenagers, because I was thinking about this yesterday as my, I have a neighbor next to me that has two daughters and one of them just turned 13. And I heard her go off on her mom screaming. I've never heard this. I've seen the little girls grow up since they were babies, you know, and I hear her just go off on her mom and screaming at the top of her lungs. And I was like, oh my God, do I not miss that? (laughs) Just, it was, and, and I, as soon as you said that about we're in our teenage years, all of that made complete sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, did my did my camera yeah, just go? You wonky? just went fuzzy. Yeah, the, that's because my cat just jumped, tried to jump on it. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Gracie's in here and she's jumping on everything, and she just hit the camera. And so, see, I, I have to say, I, sophomore year in college, that's I need to go a little beyond that. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Maybe like when we're 30s. How about yeah, that? Yeah, okay. That's- <laughs> maybe even 40s. Oh, I don't know. I'm giving it. To- yeah, the- okay, everybody. She wants to make herself known. This is what happened to my camera Gracie. for a moment right here. <laughs> so everybody say hi, Gracie. And, you know, I wanted to. Hi, Gracie. I was reading Mar- Marsha Marcia Martin's. Um, I haven't read the whole thing, but I think she's saying my concern is the major news networks, right? And are they trying to keep the momentum going with the Trump's shock and awe for their own writings? Okay. So I wanted to say, Marsha, is that um, I'm going to correct that and then correct it. Okay. Because even the Fox News stopped Mm. the, when Trump came out to say all the um, negative stuff and then all the wrong information, disinformation, Fox News actually interjected and said, nope, and they stopped airing, okay? They did this multiple times, they've been doing this, okay? So I actually have faith in this. I have faith in this country, and maybe because I'm an immigrant, you know, I don't know. I mean, Kamara Harris is like, you know, my hero, right? Because I'm an Asian American. I came into this, I came to this country to learn English and, you know, built my life up to this point. Um, so maybe immigrants have a little bit of a different opinions about this country, but I, you know, I appreciate this country because this country has given me the opportunities that I don't think I would, I would have ever had as a female, as a mixed race in Japan. The fact is I wouldn't have, I would not have. So there's a huge sense of not just love for this country, but respect for this country and appreciation for this place. And please take a look, Marsha, if you Google Fox News interjecting or stopping Trump's um, disinformation or misinformation, you will find many clips. And they are people on Fox News even 
that are actually coming out on live shows and saying, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's a, that's a wrong information. And that's not true. Like there's a one scene that this guy's like, that's not true. That's not true. They had that Republican- happened yesterday with the, was it yesterday with the newscaster? And, um, so, and Fox you know, cut away from McEnany, McEnany yeah. yesterday yeah. too. Yeah. And I yeah. want to say, you know, there are the opinion writers there that try to pass themselves off as newscasters. They're not. They're opinion pieces. And what they say does not have to be based on fact. They haven't cut away. And they're keeping people riled up. But that's how they get their ratings. So know who the pin- opinion people are always that it's their opinion and it doesn't have to be based on fact. And then there are newscasters. The newscasters, if they show integrity, even if you disagree with them, at least they're coming from a factual base. Yeah, it's shifting. Almost overnight, it's shifting. So it's it's happening and I'm so grateful. That's why I try to focus on that much more because Really, this is so important right now. During the liminal space, the unknown time, you've got to focus on filling and nourishing you. So filling the glass instead of constantly looking for things that are emptying in you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's your choice to choose to look for things that are positive, things that will nourish and give you energy and feedback the prana that, that you, you felt like you were squeezed out of for the last four years. It's a time to replenish, and it's important we do this this month. And thank God we have Thanksgiving coming, too, because you can really pay attention to the gratitude side. And, you know, really, um, a lot of people complain about this country that, you know, never really left this country. Like, I have a best friend that's never really left this country. You know, he's a retired firefighter and complains about this country a lot. And I have to stop and say to him, you know, even though... I understand there are things that are really terrible about this country. I would not deny there are terrible things in this country. Okay. But I can't, I can't honestly find another country that the, I would want to move to. I could go back and move back to Japan. I could probably, you know, move to Europe somewhere. I could probably apply for a UK citizen. I mean, yeah, I could probably do that. But to be honest with you, I want to make this place work. I want to make United States work like the Gandhi's quote. Okay. So that's my goal is to make my environment beautiful, you know, so focus on that. And that's the living above the noise, you know, of the noise that's been suppressing you go rise up beyond that noise and make music because the noise is just not having pauses. Right. I've been listening to John Denver all the time. (laughs) John Denver's great. We love John Denver here in Denver, Colorado, too. (laughs) Um, But it's the the noise is not giving yourself the pauses because you can't make music out of noise. The only time that the noise actually becomes the concerto, the noise finally becomes the Beethoven's symphony is that when you give it pauses in between the notes. Mm -hmm. So work on how do I have a vacation from this? And how do I have pauses? Okay. And I will have been, I'm I'm going to get off in about two minutes. And, um, you know, just having fun. And I know that you have to go. Uh, I'll I'll get off in about two minutes. So I'll wrap up. I'm I'm, I'm done talking, but I'll just settle in and then I'll get off. So, but thanks for having me again. Cause I'm so much. Thank you for helping us understand this. I really love thinking about the United States being a, a teenager throwing a fit. And this is why the division is here and this too shall pass. And I believe that I absolutely believe that in this morning, Well, the last few days when I've been seeing the prisms that we were given and directing that light, I was told, we don't do this for you. We don't judge this. We don't judge this way is right. And you can have an influence by just doing this or doing this. We have to actually take action. So if we want a change, if there's something that we want to see to help this teenage country grow up and and become a mature country then point that light where change can happen but we've got to do our part we can't just sit by and say 
I don't like this. What action do you want to take? And one of the things, Masami, that I told you, the action that I took immediately is I want to see the two senators yeah. in Georgia, you, you know, um, win on the Democratic side so that there's a balance. I actually want a 50-50. I actually, that's my desire is 50 50. Let's create a balance and let's see them work it out instead of an imbalance. I would love to see a 50-50 balance. What is wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that. That's how you have quality discussions and can get things done. So for me, that's what I'm praying for is balance. And so when I direct that light, and by the way, the, the light directed on its own, I didn't do that. All seven prisms, it's amplifying our desires. So instead of focusing on what you don't want, focus on what you do want as you are using, invoking that energy towards Georgia, creating that balance so that you know, it's, it's not so somebody just used the word polarizing. It's polarizing so that there's a balance that opens up a discussion on what it is that we truly want. Mm -hmm. And then and take action on that. And immediately I started sending money because I know what I want. Get clear. Get yeah. really clear and clear from the heart. It, it's true. It's true. It, you got to take action. And I was so excited when you texted me. Yeah. Stop wishing, really start having a backbone, stop having just a wishbone, like Carolyn Mace often, often yep. says, when she yep. says, stop with your wishing bones and have a backbone. Right. So, and then start putting that into action like you are doing. And yeah, let and money and making calls, yeah, you know, let's make, however that is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you for doing that so immediately, Cindy. I so appreciated it. And that's why, you know, we started chatting and we're like, let's do this together. So <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sorry to run. I wish I could stay, but um, thank you for having me. And hopefully you guys will, I will come back and listen to it again uh, after. To okay. have discussion. Well, thank you so much. So beautiful. And I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you so much. I'm a sorry. Thank you. Hi, Ferris. <laughs> um, Ferris, do you want to go ahead and read all the comments? I see them coming in and I haven't, they've been going by pretty fast. Uh, okay. Uh, Marsha said, uh, yes, I know all this, even though they are all talking about the untruths. I mean that Trump is gaining the entire news coverage. He is a master of publicity. Also, I'm not in the U.S., although I usually watch U.S. news more than Canada. Uh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna talk about, uh, they have to cover something. They, they're on the air 24 hours, mm -hmm. seven days a week. So they have to cover something. So they're going to cover whatever's whatever's there. Uh, uh, Penny said a commentator said this morning that some Republicans like yeah this I like this Republicans like Mitch McConnell are trying to keep the agitation going uh, mm -hmm. because of the upcoming Georgia Georgia Senate race runoff. McConnell will lose his power if the if they uh, if they win and flip the U.S. Senate. So he and others are trying to rile people up to fundraise for the race. And once the race is over, uh, they'll quit and agree and agree that the presidential election was not rigged after all. Yeah, he knows uh, it's not. And I like this because they won on those same ballots that Trump is contesting. Yeah. Nobody ever points that out. Uh, uh, Patricia said, and that's uh, what I see with Trump. It's hard when an old habit is changing. The old habit fights back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dolores says she's got to get uh, groceries, so let's let's stay positive. Uh, I'm positive she's going to get some good groceries. Uh, <laughs> Richard said, speaking of having backbone, I strained my back yesterday. Oh, man. So you need to get more backbone, dude. <laughs> You're right. Uh, getting old sucks, don't it? Uh, Patricia said yes, and word is that Trump knows he lost. Of course he does, but he's fighting so that he can write the narrative and not leave as a, quote, loser, because that is the worst word in the world for that guy. 
It is. You know, I, I want to make sure that we leave today on a positive note. Back in July, I told you that today was a significant day. And who knows what significance, what happened today. They, they went into court today to try and oh, yeah. um, kill the Affordable Care Act. And the Supreme Court said, you know, this is not our place to do this. So Have they already done that? Yeah. Oh. It was done this morning. So, see, sometimes we think when we get these dates, it's something bad. But it never felt bad. It, it, Patricia and I talked about this. And I said, it didn't feel negative. And it wasn't negative. It was something very positive that happened today is they, they did not kill the Affordable Care Act. They felt cool. like it wasn't their place to make that decision. And I think that's very positive and a very beautiful thing. Uh, Patricia so, said, not yet, I think it they're still hearing the opinions. That's what I thought. Oh, are they? Oh, I thought that they made the decision. It just came up on my news feed. So it oh, feels like that's what that. it's about, but I don't think that they're going to make that decision. Okay. And Karen's got her hand up for a while. Karen, what okay, you got? Karen? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. I was going to yeah, say, no, go. they just presented it today. And then they sit, they go back and they I analyze it and decide what to do. When you said that, I thought, oh, my God, I can't believe they did it on the same day. Okay. I thought that they did it on the day. Did you hear that, that they just said, no, we're not going to take this? No, that's what they said this morning. My aunt just showed me, a, uh, I did, and I didn't read it, to be fair. Well, it definitely not. wasn't this morning. Pardon? I know it was presented this morning, but usually yeah. they don't make a decision that right okay. away like that. Yeah, they definitely had, didn't make a decision this morning because uh, like two hours ago, they still hadn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then I misunderstood. Oh, you got me, got me so excited. <laughs> yeah, that's what well, I, let's, let's uh, go, then let's I misspoke, go with that, everybody. Though. I misspoke on that because my aunt just showed me the mm -hmm. headline and, and I was getting ready for this and didn't take time to, to look at it. Well, well, let's keep let's keep that in our hearts that that's really yeah. what's going to happen and that that's yeah. what was said. So, I hope so. Goal. I hope she cool. was right, and she might have uh, just misread it too. And she was the one that just reported it to me and just kind of showed it to me on the phone. And I went, "Great, good." Um, well, Patricia said that two of them said that it wasn't Texas's place to abolish the entire act, which is basically what what the test Texas just uh, judge had tried to do. Okay. Yeah, and two conservative, um, you know, Roberts, of course, and Kavanaugh, it's interesting, they're the ones who are citing on the side of, you know, we're not sure if it's Texas's place to abolish this entire yeah. act, just because they want, um, I think they're trying to take away the, it was something about you have to have it, the, right. um, uh, what's where it they called? charge you if you don't have yeah. it or something like that, or they can fine you. So they're like, we're okay with that part of it, but we don't think you can abolish the whole act. So yeah, and Texas was saying that that part could not be severed. Uh, the public public option, is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, whatever it's called. They, yeah. they were, Texas is claiming that can't be severed from the entire act. Right. Uh, and, uh, and if it can't be severed from the entire act, then that makes the whole thing unconstitutional. Right. And luckily, two of the conservatives are saying, well, maybe not. <laughs> so it's good. It could go in that direction. It shows that if they look at the law and not go down party lines, instead, if they really look at the law, that that's all we can really ask of the Supreme Court is to yeah. follow the that's law. their job. Yes. Yeah. And I agree. I think that part never should have been in there, that everybody has to have it. Okay, and thank you, Patricia. Um, Ferris, other? Uh, Penny just said, uh, quoted uh, the Wall Street Journal, Supreme Court justices questioned GOP state's case against ACA Roberts, uh, Kavanaugh, uh, against the ACA Roberts and Kavanaugh joined the liberals in voicing skepticism that the entire law must fall now that the penalty for lack of insurance is zero. Mm. The individual mandate. Yeah. Thank you, Richard.
Okay, um, anything else? I think that's about it. Okay, a few things um, that I wanna just, some notes just from today. Um, I wanted to bring up that this was a significant day and it feels like it's a significant day, but it feels like a soft, significant day. It doesn't feel like a, oh my God day. <laughs> So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and that's so is that what we're going to, how we're going to classify them as soft and hard? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just, it was not an oh my God day because I've had some oh my God well, days. How about sweet and sour? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> sweet and sour days. <laughs> and um, I want to make sure that if you have a seasonal recipe, we have received two now, that's it. And so we're trying to get it together so that everybody can, um, can you know uh, uh, so we can get it out to everybody so we promised that email we want to send it but please send your seasonal recipes for drinks and you know that kind of stuff so that would be great um let me see i'm still seeing two flags and and i woke up to two new flags and i said this earlier this year i think back in may that i am seeing i'm being shown two flags. We're going to have two new American flags. And I, I'm i just a guess on my part what this means. Um, two new American flags. I don't know if one of them is a new look at the flag because quite honestly, with being in the South and seeing them used kind of as a rebel flag here um, on the on the Trump trains, I have been, I've gotten to a point where I, I didn't even want to see the American flag. I didn't want to even put it out in my front yard because it has had a negative connotation. So I don't know if this means that now it's going to have a new um, meaning again, that people are go not going to look at it as a rebel flag again. I don't know if that's it or if it's Puerto Rico. No, um, and, and, and like Patricia said, the new Magnolia flag, Mississippi has a new flag. Yeah, this was a stu new American flag, though, for the well, that American. Is American. Yeah, well, maybe maybe that's it. And um, yeah, for Mississippi, and it could be, um, is D.C. going to become its own state? You know, I, I just want... Puerto wonder. Rico. Pardon? Or Puerto Rico. Right, right. So maybe both of those. I keep seeing these two new flags and I woke up, I told you, you know, and I, I, I explained the other day, I woke up to a flag, a painting, a flag with the, which I'm, I'm going to try this afternoon, everybody. I'm going to try it. And then taking a hair dryer and just blowing on it to see if it becomes uh, purple because then it just became this beautiful purple wave like that was just gorgeous. So, um, you know, I don't know what that is, but I just want to keep everybody up on on some of the things that I'm getting, um, some of the downloads I'm getting. Um, another one is, um, yes, we were on the verge of a dictatorship. Yes, that was happening, and we are going to be getting more information on that. We were right on the cusp of that happening. So I've had a few people email me about that. And yes, I am being told that that is true. And it was the action of the people. Again, the, the power of the seven prisms and the seven light beings, we can use them however. It is up to us to take action. And we talked about that a little bit ago. Um, I was also told that 30, uh, that, you know, on July 31st, that, a ha you know, 77,000 more people would be, um, would have died from the coronavirus, and they did, that happened. I was told that actually back in May, and then I was told on that day that 250,000 more would die by winter. And so I keep asking, is that, and I keep seeing 1221, 1221, 1221. So is that the date that that's going to happen? We're at 100,000 more, almost at 100,000 more since that day hmm. that I was in July, that I was told that. And so I keep asking, okay, is there going to be 150 more, um, 150,000 more by 
12, 21. For a long time, I kept being told that this could change, this could change, and now it looks like it can't be changed, like we're on that path. And so I'm encouraging each of you to please, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, please be careful. Please, please, please be careful. If you're going to get with family, ask your family to all get tested. Ask your family to be cautious in getting together for the holidays. Because if we don't get together for this holiday, well, then we will be able to get together for a future holiday. So please, please, please be careful. Because I'm getting goosebumps all over because I am told that this is true. This is, we're on track for that, for another hundred, and that's not very many weeks away for that to be true. That's a lot of people in a short period of time. But with everything that's been going on, all of the exposure from, from the in-person rallies that were held, from, being, from voting, my neighbor now has COVID. And then I talked to her this morning and she's going on this roller coaster of illness. And just like I hap- that happened to me in January, there would be days I'd feel great and I'd get up and I'd be able to do some things. And other days you're just out and you can't even move. And she's going through that. So she was explaining it to me and she was the one that I was actually exposed to. And we stayed way away and she was wearing her mask Um she was fully protected. And um, so I just, I just want to remind everybody, please, please be careful. Um, <laughs> excuse me. Just a second. I'm going to mute to cough. Ferris, is anybody else saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the lady that uh, has been hosting uh, the, the TV show that, that Richard's been on is going to help him get his, get his book written titles uh that he's that he's looking at now is perfect vision 2020 i think that's a cool title yeah that's great uh, and congratulations dude yeah uh, <laughs> and penny i'm sorry that you that you actually meant puerto rico and dc because i i was hoping that maybe mississippi was actually going to join the union <laughs> <laughs> uh alabama always says thank god for mississippi because Mississippi is what makes Alabama look good. Uh, and uh, Penny said, R.I.P. Alex Trebek. Yeah, no kidding. What a cool guy. Yeah. And let's see. Um, and Patricia said she's apparently they're not sure yet whether California is going to leave the union. Uh that that apparently has been a conversation since since it became a state (laughs) yeah you know what's interesting that today masami brought up the zebra way the middle way um the seventh thing that i was given this morning to share with everyone is americans a collective race of its own it's not a separate race. We are in a, a collective race. And right here, I have a race of zebras. We, as Americans, we are, we are the zebras of the world. We are just a collective. And I actually wrote that down this morning and forgot about it until I just looked at my screen and saw that. And, um, and then just before I came on, and I don't have all the information on this yet, but the last thing I was told um, just before we got on, and I shared this with Ferris because I had just heard it, there was a reason that Donald Trump had such a strong reaction to Joe Biden and tried to discredit him almost immediately. And that was, there was a soul recognition. There was a remembering of the soul contract these two souls had before they came to this physical world. Mm. And I just got goosebumps all over and I just like, oh my God. So they were going to always have it out. (laughs) These two old dudes. (laughs) We're going to always 
have it out. And there was a soul recognition. So we're, we are seeing a fulfillment of these two people's soul contracts. They made this agreement. And I just went, oh, of course, we're watching it play out. And it's part of our agreement too. But they were always supposed to do this. And that just gave me chills. So as we move forward, I want us to remember that. And um, it's, to me, that was big. It was a big thing. And I'm sure that I will get more information on that by this weekend. And by the way, it was, um, it was Crow, the light being of the second storm that gave me that, which is, remember, that one um, is... Um, willful ignorance and it's the destruction of wisdom so what we are being asked to do is look at that divine wisdom so we'll talk more about that this weekend um we'll meet friday and on friday lorelei is going to be joining us and lorelei is going to be talking about what else that new moon that, that Masami was talking about. I've been thinking a lot about the, the new moon. I've been talking uh, to, to Lorelai about, you know, Mars and what we might all be feeling. So she's going to be joining us on Friday night. And then on Sunday, I will be getting more information because again, Crow has been talking to me a lot about the shadows uh, and showing me some visions of things. So I look forward to getting more information. And, uh, you know, I'm never given things all at once, usually. It's just a little bit at a time. Um, Masami will be on Joe, yeah, on, on John Virgos tomorrow. And by the way, it's 1111 gateway number tomorrow. And 1111 2020, oh my gosh, what is what does that mean? The 11 is the, the number of the dreamer. So keep that in mind tomorrow. Let your dreams be easy. Stay away from the news. Let your dreams come through. Pay attention to your dreams. Please uh, journal about your dreams. This is the number of the dreamer. The um, 1111 is a gateway number. The new gateway is opening. It's also, we've got to look at the number one. Look at how many times it's amplified. It is, it's reflecting upon itself. It is amplified. What have we been given? We've been given all of these, these um, the prisms to amplify. So tomorrow really put those numbers in that equation <laughs> of, of the seven, of the, um, the seven prisms and amplify that number of the gateway, a new beginning, new creation and dream, 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 dream. So I love that. And then 2020, perfect vision. It's also the number two. The number two is all about relationships, creating relationships with people that we disagree with. Let's look at those relationships. It's also about looking at your shadow side, looking at, you know, the yin and the yang. It's um, the number two. The number two is about balance, creating a balance. And that's what we're doing is we're restructuring, rebalancing everybody. That's why I'm praying for that 50-50 in, in the, um, the Senate because I want that kind of a balance where we need that now. We really need that going forward. And um, it, that reduces down to four. And the number four is, you know, the four seasons, the four, the four legs on a stool, you know, that also is a number of balance. So, um, Two, two, two. Yeah, the two, two, two. The number two, two, two. That <clears throat> amplifies that. Anytime you've got multiple numbers, it's an amplifier. And all year long, we've been showing this that the the prisms are amplifiers. So plug in those numbers to those prisms and let it amplify it even that much more. The balance, the stability of the the four seasons, the four directions. 
So it, um, Patricia, do you want to add anything to that? Or anybody? Three things. Mm -hmm. Vicki mentioned that uh, uh, Puerto Rico voted for statehood. So let's hope that uh, personally, I hope we can, we can make Puerto Rico a state. It's a long time coming. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow is also Veterans Day. So yes, yes. fist bump of veteran or elbow bump or air hug. Uh, to you, Ferris. Thank you. And we'll see if, uh, if Biden is truly a uniter. We'll see if he gets a cat, too. <laughs> we got to write it. Isn't that the coolest dog? Did you guys see his dog? Oh, my gosh. Huge. Thanks. Huge. <laughs> yeah, well, he better get a cat. Yeah, we'll tell him. He's he wants to bring the country together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? Now, Cindy, I was just thinking if you said a new flag, if we do get a new state, then of course we have to add another star to our flag. Yeah. So our flag does change then. Yeah. And I saw two, not one, but two. And it feels like it's in short order, like it's going to be one and then the other. It's like you just barely get one and then there's another. And I don't know what the, if it's the same flag that changes twice, it feels like that's what it is. It feels like it's the same flag changing twice so we'll see and again it could just be the attitude towards the flag you know that would be a change too because holy I, cow what's that susan said tucker carlson has said that there's not enough evidence to suggest voter fraud <laughs> tucker carlson said that <laughs> he's had a brain aneurysm <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, holy cow. I think the Fox people are tired of the rhetoric too. <laughs> so what he's saying is move on with it, folks. Let's they get can, this going. They can read which way the wind's blowing. Are you talking to me? I said, are you yeah. okay? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I heard you yeah. say something. What is that? Okay, I think somebody just unmuted. Yeah, yeah. Susan okay. did. Yeah, they're seeing yeah, the writing right. on the wall. That's what yeah. I, and I've never, I never have gotten different anybody that, that I was always told that Biden was going to win, always. That was an absolute, just could he be, um, is he going to get in? That was my question. That wasn't their question. That was my question always until the other night. So I feel confident about that because and this, I just want to remind everybody, when I get these downloads, this isn't coming from me. It is not about my ego, about being right or anything else. It is not. It is what I'm getting, and I have learned to trust it because they keep giving me accurate information, and they keep telling me don't listen to anybody else because if you do, then you're going to be swayed in some way. You're I'm easily swayed, believe me. I'm an easy sell. Ferris will tell you, people can sell me on stuff. <laughs> I just, that's my Pisces nature. So I have to stay away from everything. And what I get is pure. And so I do have confidence in the divine who are talking to me, the divine beings. And Patricia said, Rupert Murdoch's over them too. Uh, and Penny said, yeah. And Tucker's probably, it's probably because of those down ballot Republican wins, uh, like we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, the, there's change. There's change. And I, I really love the, the teenager analogy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. I, I didn't even remember when I put this list together that I, the number seven, and there are seven prisms, mm -hmm. Americans are a collective race of in and of themselves. And we are a melting pot. We are a nation of zebras. And that is a beautiful thing. That is not a negative or a derogatory. Somebody that was concerned about it. It wasn't, it wasn't a bad thing that she wrote. It wasn't like a negative thing that she wrote. She just wondered if somebody felt that way. And I don't feel that way at all. And I am happy to be one of the zebra stripes, you know? <laughs> That's why it's going on my motorcycle. <laughs> I love it. 
They're one of the most beautiful creatures, I think. <laughs> and he said they should have known that teenagers would never let a toddler be the boss of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Air five. <laughs> Air five. <laughs> Penny. That's great. Okay. Does anybody else have anything? Yeah, the terrible twos. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The terrible twos. This is 2020. The terrible twos. <laughs> That's funny. Maureen, yeah. we are being kind. <laughs> I just have to tell you, Sarah's um, starting to go through a little bit of that with Katie. Not the terrible twos. She's only, she's just getting ready to turn eight months. But she's now starting that. Um, to be the yancha. I want to do it myself. Get away. Give me the food, do, you know. And so she's starting that little rebellious stage. And I just watch Sarah when she when she um, FaceTimes me and I just go, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, wait till she sets the house on fire. No, 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 no. Let's not say that. That's what erase, Ferris erase, did. Erase, erase, erase. <laughs> That's what Ferris did. Yeah, no. When he started walking and, and going around. Oof. And Patricia, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, don't say that. But she's, yeah, she's at that stage now. So very, very fun. Um, anything else that I forgot? I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I loved what Joe Biden said the other day. Keep the faith. Keep the faith, everybody. Yeah. And don't, you know, I, I really think that when we were asked to unknot the Ten Commandments, we were not asked to rewrite the Ten Commandments. They already exist. But when, when we were asked to unknot them, we were asked to get rid of the word not. So instead of focusing on what it's, you know, what we don't want, you know, don't do this and don't do that, we're being asked to focus on what we want and get really clear on that and shine our light on that and use the prisms to amplify what it is that we want. And remember, there's another side praying for what they want. So include in that the highest and be best good, you know, and, and a balance. So, yep. And let's spread that faith. Good idea. Oh, and DJ, that wasn't me. That was Little Ferris, my son. <clears throat> uh, and what those little heating elements that you put in a put in a coffee cup to 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 heat up water. Uh, his mom had one of those. My ex-wife was a flight attendant, and she used that to to fix soup in her room when when she was on layovers and. He liked to carry it around the house, and he found out one day that he that he could plug it in. Uh, and he found out when you plug it in and leave it laying on the carpet, it starts a fire. <clears throat> but luckily, it didn't burn much. Uh, and she said, "I believe our collective faith steered the, the election for the best." Yeah, yeah, I agree. And again, this this was going to be. The old K Corral. <laughs> Always. <laughs> it was, it was, I, I just never thought of it that way. But these, that's why there was such a strong reaction from the president when, when he decided to run. I mean, it, remember, it was almost immediate. And I thought that was weird. Yeah. And I'm looking at Biden thinking, here's this old dude, you know, and boy, has he come to life. You know, he's, he's become 20 years younger as he's been running. It's been amazing to watch. And, um, but I kind of had that, what is that about? And then today when I heard that, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. These two have a soul contract play out. Pretty, pretty cool. And um, yes, he fought. Yeah. More than Kamala. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that is true. And it's time to say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Where's Gracie? She's in the room somewhere. Uh, She's not knocking over my camera anymore. Yeah. <laughs>
Good. <laughs> Try to. <laughs> I thank you all for being here. Um, I wonder what the sleepy Joe means. Um, and, and in the basement. Well, he was trying to give him a name. But you know, everybody's saying, yeah, I'm like Sleepy Joe. I get to finally sleep again. <laughs> so I love that. I love it. People turn that around. Yeah, I'm going to be Sleepy Joe. I'm going to be like Sleepy Joe. I'm going to get a good night's sleep. And that's the way I feel. Penny said we should, we should be all be like Penny the cat and just chill out. Yep, there you go. I love that. Yep, she's just chilling. Well, I love you all. Let's open up the line and say ta-ta for now. Look, at there's another kitty I see. Oh, Anya, yeah. Thank you, thank oh, you. that's a dog. Oh, so wonderful. It's my puppy. It's a it's Ripping a up newspapers. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. And, and my sleeve if I let her. I'm going to... Well, this, I thank you all for being here and, you know, I, I just love you all so much. And I'm glad that we get to go on this journey together to support each other. Me too. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see Thank you all you. Friday. We'll see you bye Friday. Bye. I Thanks love you. you everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.